This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Avast. If you have a computer that's laden, heavy with viruses and spyware and malware and ransomware, you need protection. Uh, yeah, that sounds like me. I clicked on all of those links, you know, and those emails and websites you're not supposed to click on. And boy, oh boy, do I have some horrible things happening on my computer. So how do I get rid of those? If you know what the ones you aren't supposed to click on, why do you click on them? I needed to know why not to click on them. Okay. If you had Avast, especially if you had Avast, one, you could be protected and you could click pretty much any link you want and still know that you will be protected, but I, I'm assuming that... What kind of links are you clicking on? That's not really important. Uh, so Avast would have protected me if I would used it and maybe I should use it before I click on links in the future? That sounds important to know. You weren't raw-dogging the internet, were you? It's like pirates. Wait, well, I'm Guys, so sorry, wait. I'm, I what? just got it. Avast is a word that pirates say. And the treasure is the links that I click on. Listen, it's an all-in-one solution, right? Avast One. It helps you take control of your safety and privacy through a range of features. So no matter what the link is, you probably have some protection. But also, there's free VPN, a free firewall, and much, much more. It's their best protection yet. You can get everything you need to take control of your safety and privacy online and accessible through a single easy-to-use interface. They're called privateers when they're good guys. I remembered. Wade, once uh, once you get set up this, you can thank Avast for supporting Distractable. I on a link that said privates here. You can confidently take control of your online world with a vast one to help you stay safe from viruses, phishing attacks, ransomware, hacking attempts, and other cyber crimes. Learn more about a vast one at avast.com. A V A S T.com. This episode of Distractable is presented by Intel. How wonderful is that? Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production. In this week's bumper extended episode, the gents hilariously discuss the appropriate places to don one's birthday suit. Beautiful Bob attends a bizarre bachelor bash in a bathhouse. Wonderful Wade creates a Dexter playroom and is pro au natural. And magnificent Mark gets near flayed alive in his own bathroom billiard horror. Yes, it's time for Naked. Now, sit back and prepare to be distracted, and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Distractable. I will be your host for today. My name is Bob. You know me. I've been here. You've probably listened to this before. I have to imagine. How could someone have not listened to this podcast a single time? How embarrassing would that be? I don't know. How shame, shame, shamey would you feel? Feel. Shame. Uh, yeah. Anyway, whatever. I'm the host for today, which means, of course, the competitors for this episode are Mark and Wade. Hi. Hey. How's it going there, fellas? It's going good. I feel good today. Back in the seat, you saddle, uh, healthy, uh, ready to laugh with my friends. You love to hear it. Brag, why don't you? You okay, Wade? Feeling good and healthy. I must be nice. Like, uh, you know... <laughs> Yeah, you know, he was, like, really sick, right? You remember that? I got a limp arm and a pulsating neck. Well, maybe oh, you should go to the doctor and get shit. those looked at. Yeah, maybe. Apparently, the Viagra went to my spine. What? <laughs> uh, uh, we should move on immediately. I'm with you, but I still hate it. <laughs> Help me. Uh, anyway, uh, this podcast is kind of like... That TV show, you know the one. Three men and a baby? Uh, the points are made up. Oh. At the end, I will pick a winner, and they will be next week's host. I realized I hadn't explained how the show works in quite a while, and I've hosted many episodes since then. But let's be honest. I mean, do you guys not want to do any more small talk? If you don't... No, I'm, I'm, I'm literally am so in... I haven't even started the small talk. Yeah, me either. I was just complaining. Okay. That's just me being me. Well, excellent. Uh, do it then. <laughs> small talk, commence. I got nothing. Oh, uh, I've been uh, feeling good getting back into the swing of things, recording stuff. A lot of cool, interesting things happen on the back end for the podcast. Life, you know, getting older. <laughs> you know, what's that about? That's weird. Uh, getting younger some days, Ooh. which is equally weird. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah. Time fluctuations. I like it. Yeah, so it's it's a wild time over here. Feeling good on this day. Who knows how I'll feel tomorrow? Well, I'm getting less pain in my arm. I'm getting balder. Uh, not any taller. Uh, you, this doesn't have to be a bit. You could just talk about... Oh. 
how, like just for a minute talk about how you're really doing oh, okay. those might be true but i don't remember how to be a person yeah i don't you know i don't know how to be a person either i don't even know where i am <laughs> wait wait how are the dogs oh they're fine thanks for asking but you know the last time i said that on an episode i'm pretty sure that's when ginger had to have back surgery so <laughs> i'm kind of afraid of answering that question anymore and now i'm the one who might need back surgery so don't ask how i am ever again no one <laughs> asking me any questions about how anyone's doing unless it's someone i don't like you know uh health wise aside you know um i've been been uh, trying to learn uh, stuff. Korean? <laughs> yeah, still working on that. We well, got back from Korea. It's good. Did you get to use your newly learned Korean in Korea? Yeah, farther along than I thought I was, which is good, but not where I want to be, which is not good. But still, you know, it's a slow and steady race. I was trying to understand. You had a YouTube video when you were out there. Mm. I, I think you posted the title in Korean. It was like Markiplier's Live in La Vida Loca. Uh, what does that translate to in English from Korean? Because it sounds like Spanish, but I know it for, you would have you would have had to put Korean, right? I would have. Yeah, I would have. Uh, that You're absolutely right. That yeah. 100% Korean. It means um, Markiplier is living the crazy life. Oh, so it's the same translation as Spanish would be. Like. Yeah, funny enough. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, weird. All right. it's a little known fact. Spanish and Korean are actually very tightly related. Yeah, you you got it. You never guess it, but there's a lot of crossover. Mm -hmm. I saw that video. I was like, I thought he was going to Korea. I didn't know he was going to Spainico. Nope. <laughs> yeah, nope. Nope. <laughs> good try. Good try. Thank you. Uh, anyway, I'm also good. I, not that it applies to this podcast much. I know we can see each other. None of us really asked either, but I guess we should have. That's good. Yeah, I suppose so. I'm sorry. But uh, I'm in a new office. It's still purple. That was pretty much it. That's cool. There's going to be like furniture around me, but there's not right now. There's just a bunch of crap piled on the floor and two shelves. That's awesome. But I'm excited. That's all you need. And Will won't be mad at me because the AC in here is as quiet as I could find when I was ordering things. Nice. Dead silent. Nice, man. Oh, because you have like a separate studio now, right? Like you're not in your... Yeah, I'm in like a shed in the backyard type setup. Mm. So it's my own little room and it has its own split AC system, which is like real quiet. Ah, oh, that's dope. That's really dope. So when you go to work in the shed, do you like pack a briefcase and like get ready for work and you just like walk to the shed? I'm kind of realizing I need to do that. I keep just like grabbing the key and being like, all right, let me head out there. But if I leave anything in the house, it's a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> it's not, I'm not just in a bedroom like, oh, I'll just go get in the other room and get... It's like I gotta put my shoes back on. Our backyard is a mess because it's like fallish right now. Yeah, so untrimmed I mean, grass from your fridge episode. Has it been trimmed since then? No, I haven't mowed the lawn in eight months. <laughs> The jungle that is your side yard. I do have to squeeze the past the bush with the pipe in it. At least you know it's there. The now repaired, the fabled location from the well-known story. <laughs> God, I'm glad people have stopped asking me if my fridge is okay. Oh, well, well you just said it. Now they're gonna. No, the, no one would do that. They ask me. I get those questions. Staring menacingly into my camera doesn't really do anything. Business emails like, hey, Bob, how's your fridge? It's like, I'm not Bob. And <laughs> Well, you know you've had some trouble with your fridge in the past. Would you like to do a sponsored segment for our home warranty company? Uh, anyway. You guys heard of Wonderful? What? How wonderful is that? Pretty wonderful, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. Uh, don't don't yell don't yell at me. Just like how wonderful it is that technology is enabling people to make art on demand. I can literally go to this piece of uh, software, if you can even call it that, and use the computational power of my Intel processor to create anything with the touch of a button. Ah. Yes. Ah. Well, I guess the implications are pretty wonderful, too, because if you can do that, you can probably do all kinds of other things. Probably, yeah. No, probably. Yes. I could see that. Yes, machine learning and AI powered by ever-increasing more powerful processors allows for ever more increasing applications that which humans could never even possibly imagine. Uh-huh. How are we doing it if we can't imagine it? We don't need to imagine it. Just do it. Just. It's oh. like they say, you just do it. Yep, that is it. There is nothing more to it than that. How wonderful is that? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess that sounds pretty wonderful. Yeah. I like everything except maybe how you're saying it. You're saying it at me instead of to me, if that makes any sense. How do you know that it's actually a person behind these words? I, I, I don't. I guess. You do sound a little crazed as you're speaking to us. A little manic. Well, I guess we had Robot Mark before. Now Robot Mark is the real Mark? We evolve. We grow. Yeah, you do sound a lot better than the last time we had Robot Mark. That's true. Market improvement. Market improvement. Ha 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 
<laughs> well, that laugh wasn't so wonderful, but the technology stuff is pretty wonderful. Yeah, how wonderful is that? Thank you, Intel. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Raycon. Guys, I've been listening to a lot of this really great podcast. It has these three guys in it. They're hilarious. They just tell stories and they play games and they switch it up all the time. It's so fun. Can you narrow it down? It's three guys. They've uh -huh. been friends for a very long time. They mm -hmm. they have a podcast where they all three basically swap stories or, or hunt things down on the internet or basically talk about the world at large. That's not interesting. That's really boring. That sounds awful. It's good. It's unique. It's individual. And my Raycon wireless ear earbuds make them sound so goddamn good. Well, I do like Raycons, but I use them to listen to music and good things, not podcast. Yeah. Guys, no, it, it's good. It has a lot of potential. There's a lot of future for this podcast, and my Raycon everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever before, and it makes these three guys feel like they're my friends, and they're in the room with me. They're not your friends, okay? That's a parasocial relationship. They don't know you. The Raycons, though, that's the most interesting thing you've said in this entire conversation. I love the Raycons, man. I mean, they have over 50,000 and five star ratings, which is 50,000 or so more than probably people that like that podcast you're talking about. Their customizable sound profiles. Nice. Noise isolation, so I don't have to hear podcasts. Way better to listen to music, which is really the best way to use your Raycons. And they have an awareness mode, which apparently you don't podcast like her. <laughs> Go to buyraycon.com slash distractible today and use my <laughs> promo code distractible to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's mm. uh, the podcast is called distractible. <laughs> B U Y R A Y C O N dot com slash D I S T R A C T I B L E with my code distractible to score 15% off. Buyraycon dot com slash distractible code distractible. Today's episode, I am the host, which means I have to pick the topic. And I did. So that's good. Yay. Today's topic is nudity. Oh. I've waited my whole life for this moment. Yeah. Have you never been naked? Uh, oh, it's about me being naked? I've ooh, no one's waited their whole life for this moment. Oh, it's about everyone and anyone being naked. But if I'm 100% honest, this topic is a little bit of a pretext because when we were working on the idea for this podcast and we recorded some test episodes, we recorded an episode where I told a really excellent story from earlier in my life. And it's a very funny story and the recording still exists. I have no idea what shape it's in, but it's out there. There's a, I, do you guys remember this story? I don't want to like give anything away. It's about a Russian bathhouse and it's a bachelor party. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great mm -hmm. story. Well, as an intro to the topic of nudity and because it's a funny story, uh, we'll put that, put, put that in here. This is past us. This is from February of 2021 is how long ago that was recorded. Damn. That's a while. So we're like different people. Almost. That was, a, that was a full episode in a test recording, right? It so was. That's a, that's a story. We were testing a, a format idea that we had that uh, turns out isn't the one we went with, which is no format except someone wins at the end. I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah. Way, way back when. I think we were telling a story in three acts. Yeah. Is that the three acts? Yeah. No, I oh, think yeah. it's, just, it's broken down into acts and each act has a title. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Which wow. is arbitrary now. But so enjoy the Russian bathhouse story. Story. Today's story it comes from a bachelor party that I went to in my early 20s. There's a gun. There is probably <laughs> the Russian... <laughs> Well, okay. There's a gun. There's probably, I think, unconfirmed the Russian mob. Gun Russians. There are a bunch of naked, very hairy strangers. <laughs> and it was one of the most relaxing and unforgettable experiences of my entire life. Most relaxing. <laughs> so and obviously, unforgettable. There's a path that brings us from the gun and whatnot to it being relaxing well, yeah, the gun and whatnot <laughs> i can connect i can connect the gun to a few things yeah, uh, no, the gun uh -huh. to the russians the russians to the naked hairy strangers sure. russians as we all know very naked very hairy generally as a people that's their culture in a nutshell yeah well mark sees the whole story then yeah yeah pretty much uh and then most relaxing uh that just goes back to the russians naked hairy and gun that i i <laughs> I have no questions. I know this. Story. <laughs> you know what happens. Yeah, it's it's weird that the most concerning part of this is the word relaxing after hearing the rest. <laughs> yeah, well, it look, it, we'll get to it, okay? 
Uh-huh. Uh, so I said this already. It's a bachelor party. Mm. So we show up. My buddy is, it's a high school friend who's getting married. Gary is getting married. Gary. And uh, his bachelor party is taking place in Cleveland. Real name? Fake name? Uh, fake name. Damn it. All right, Gary. Let's just go ahead and assume all names are fake until proven otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Even our names might be fake. Right. Uh, there's a gut involved. So obviously fake name. I'm changing my own name in the story. You won't know which one is me and what I've done. <laughs> Are you Gary? Is he Gary? <laughs> yeah, have you been Gary all along? Your yeah. friend's bachelor yeah, party, all right. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're high school friends. All the groomsmen, all the guys coming to this party, we're all high school buddies. We've known each other. So we all show up in Cleveland, and we're excited. The one wild card in this is... So I'm not the best man. I'm just along for the ride here. Mm. The party planning was handled by Gary's best man, James, but primarily by James's cousin, Leroy. Mm. Now, we're all of us friends. We're all early 20s, about the same age. Leroy is older. Leroy is, I think, 33, 35. He's older. But then, but not old. You're not saying that's old. He's not an old man. Okay, but we're he's like approaching a, that age. I don't want to. He's like a decade older than us in this story. At the story. time, because you're so in like, your 20s. We're like young guys, right? We're like in yeah. college age guys. Gary is basically a grandparent to us. He's in his 30s. <laughs> He's not that old, but you know, you remember when we were that, yeah, like yeah. When, when you're 20 years old and you meet someone and they're like, oh, I'm 35 and I'm a businessman. You're like, oh my God, get out of here. Get away from me with your death stank, grandpa. Oh. And so like Leroy is legendary, but we don't know Leroy. Leroy has Wait, like a rep legendary? for getting into shenanigans and parties. Wait, is he the Leroy, like the yeah, Leroy like, Jenkins Leroy? Like James tells us stories about cousin Leroy. Like, yeah, he was on this yacht. He met this dude in a club and got together in, in Miami. And the, like Leroy's done some stuff. We don't know him personally, but we know of Leroy. Is Leroy so, Russian? No, Leroy is interesting, uh, interesting. I mean, he's cousin of my friend I grew up with. They're friends that they live in Ohio. He's from Cleveland. How hairy is Leroy? Uh, well, he's actually pretty hairy. Oh, <laughs> right. we're getting somewhere now. Leroy naked, got it. How much yep. gun does Leroy have? Leroy is, <laughs> is neither the source nor the crux of the gun part of the story. Well, he's involved with it. He's tangentially involved with the gun. <laughs> All right, we'll get to that, I guess. But so Leroy has taken the lion's share of planning this party, right? The only info we got is these are the dates. Show up in Cleveland. We booked a hotel. Traditionally, the groomsmen like pay for the party, right? The, the mm-hmm. person who's getting married, he doesn't have to pay for it. It's his right. party. So they're like, you know, everyone pays a, a couple hundred bucks or whatever. They told us the amount. So we all showed up on the right day with the cash in hand, like, we're ready to do this. No idea what's happening. It starts off super normal. Mm. So it starts off, we show up, like, we drive up Friday night. I think I was in college, so I was living in Cincinnati at this point. So it's like five and a half hour drive, drive up to Cleveland late Friday night. I get in, we all check into the hotel, wake up Saturday morning, it's bachelor party day. Mm. All day Saturday, all we know is we're partying it up. So we wake up, you know, mid morning and we go to this cool place. We just go to like a normal restaurant. I think it was the Market Garden Brewery, which is a pretty cool place in Cleveland. It's like a craft brewery, your gastro pub sort of thing. They're known for having confit duck wings <sighs> that pair very well with their locally sourced IPA that they make in house. It's a very like early twenties thing. Obviously we're all freshly twenty one years old. We never drank a drop of liquor in our lives, mm-hmm. but suddenly <laughs> we're into craft beer. <laughs> Because that's what you do when you're 22 years old and you're going to a bachelor party. Yeah, yeah. As normal as it could get. It's great. It's really tasty food. We hang out there for a while. At some point, Leroy like lunches over. Leroy gathers us up, huddles everyone up, and hands out. This is an indication of Leroy's obvious age. He hands out to us printed out map quest directions <laughs> to the address of the next place where the party is continuing. And so we're leaving this restaurant. We're driving somewhere new. And, you know, on these printed directions, it shows, like, the final destination. And we look at it. It's a little ways away. And it's not in, like, it's not, like, downtown on, like, 4th Street or whatever. There's a cool street downtown Cleveland. Mm -hmm. It's not in the area where we know all the breweries are. Mm -hmm. It's, like, in an industrial area. And we all kind of look at it. We're like, okay, maybe he knows something we don't. But, you know, we're here for the party. So, Mm -hmm. sure. We load up. We follow the directions, and it does indeed go to what is essentially an industrial area in Cleveland. 
if you know anything about Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. there are some pretty cool, pretty good parts and some parts of it that are okay and some parts of it that it's kind of a meme that if you go there, you're asking for trouble. Uh -huh. There's a couple of YouTube videos that are made as jokes. The like tourism videos, you know, where it's like, come to Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. One of the lines from one of the songs is, don't go to East Cleveland or you'll die. <laughs> It has a bad reputation. Let me guess. The directions go straight into <laughs> East Cleveland? If there was a monument at the center of the worst part of East Cleveland, I'm pretty sure that's where we went. The area that we drove into looked like there had been a zombie apocalypse there, and it never got any better. Like, and Cleveland is part of the Rust Belt. Like, this is because, you know, they used to have steel factories and or steel mills or whatever. They used to have, like, industry. Uh, but that's all gone now. <laughs> that, that doesn't happen anymore. So now there's all this empty, you know, warehouse space and, and, and steel mills and, and whatever, huge buildings. Finally, we arrive at the address, which is, as far as we can tell, a fenced-in gravel parking lot. Which, fine. There's a fence. That's good. Uh, it seems sketchy, but, like... We're here for we're here for Gary's bachelor party, right? Like yeah. we're here, man. So whatever this is, I'm sure it's great. Trusting Leroy, and yeah, so we we park out in this fenced-in parking lot, and Leroy indicates there's like a building, like a little three-story building. It looks like residential. Doesn't have a sign, nothing that explains what it is. And he's like, "That's where we're going, boys. Mm -hmm. That's the place. Cool, fine. It must be awesome in there." <laughs> so we start walking over as we're crossing the parking lot there's a guy sitting in one of the cars by the entrance and i guess it was his job to like guard the parking lot he works for like the establishment that we're going to and we're like cool you know what that's actually pretty good i was a little worried about the cars he's watching you know great leroy knows without saying a word to this gentleman or explaining anything he walks up to this dude and just gets out his wad of cash and just does that thing like they do in the movies where he starts flipping like 20s out, just like <laughs> hands this dude, I don't know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, no idea. For me at that time, that was like a life savings. Like he hands away a ton of cash and we're oh, like, yeah. okay, yeah. cool. And as we all single file walk by the dude in the car, we realize why he gets the cash and why no one talks to him. It's because he's not just sitting and watching, he has a shotgun <laughs> between his legs. <laughs> Like, ready to rock. He's sitting here watching our cars, guarding them with a shotgun because he might need a shotgun to sit in this parking lot and make sure our cars don't get broken into. Okay, wait. No, okay. Question. I don't know expert shotgun handling, but I would not qualify as shotgun between my legs as ready to rock. Well, so he's sitting, he's sitting in the car, right? Window mm -hmm. down to accept the cash payments. The muzzle is aimed towards Sticking the floor. Up. Oh, oh, no, no. Down. So it's like the butt of the gun is aimed towards him. So if he reached down between his legs, uh, he could come back uh, up with the shotgun in like shoulder ready to fire position. For some reason, I thought he was outside the car and he was leaned up <laughs> against it with his legs kind of like crisscrossed to <laughs> the shotgun was between his legs just trying to conceal a shotgun casually <laughs> there's only one way in and out of this place and you have to go right by him to get in right yeah mm. so we did, i didn't see him when we we're driving in but he's sitting in his car i guess this is his car you know it's a fenced in parking lot right so there's one driveway where there's no fence he is right there in his car watching mm. i assume you know if someone climbs the fence or tries to break in that's why he has the shotgun obviously but yeah, so no words. He doesn't even look at us. This is like an older gentleman, like, I don't know, 50s, 60s. He, the details escape me, but he does not even register that we exist. We paid him. He'll make sure our cars don't get broken into. Cool. So we proceed on to the, the party. You know, it's, it's party time, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I just say this whole sequence, the parking in the lot, the no words, cash transaction, and then as we're walking into this unmarked building, the entrance, you walk through a door and you walk up two flights of stairs to like get to it. It feels like a movie. Like it feels like a like The Departed, like a scene from like a Scorsese movie where I am out of place. <laughs> like I'm the guy who accidentally pisses off shotgun guy in the parking lot yeah, yeah. and he picks it up and I'm like, no, no, just I'll go. Just don't hurt. <laughs> like I'm that guy in this situation. And we're all that guy because we're a bunch of like white 20 year old dudes who yeah, don't yeah. belong here uh -huh. except Leroy knows apparently mm -hmm. this is not a place where you walk in and you're like yes I'd like to have a party you walk in and no one says a word I mean is Leroy's cousin even like oh yeah don't worry guys this is cool or is his cousin even just you like know, 
I what, don't know, man. When we get out of the car, cousin Leroy, Leroy is cousin of James. Mm. Leroy is like, don't say anything. Like, be cool. I know these guys. I know what to do. Just follow my lead. Do what I do. It's like he knows the secret code and none of us should say a word because there's no talking or anything. It's a whole thing. It's very ominous. Mm -hmm. But we're here for Gary's party. This is for Gary. So we're here. We're going to have a good time no matter what happens. I got one more question before yeah. you go on with the story. Uh, now, you said Leroy's got kind of a reputation, a famous reputation. Were you aware of his reputation prior to this, or is this the beginning of his reputation forming? He had a reputation prior to this weekend. But you all trusted him. Yeah, well, it's kind of like okay. James James would tell us stories that were like, he, he works in media, right? So he shoots like promotional stuff, like sort of commercials, but with like... With cameras or with shotguns, typically? It can't, Leroy okay. works mostly with cameras. But like, you know, he meets people and he goes places, he travels the world and he ends up like at a club in Milan somewhere. So like, it's not like he has a crazy reputation of like danger or being just terribly irresponsible. He's like that guy who just like travels places and spends, you know, spends a thousand dollars on bottle service at this club and hangs out and meets he hung out with some models or something like he's not a dangerous person he just has this okay. reputation right gotcha. we know of leroy's exploits and everyone's kind of like man he sounds cool like but i don't know what he does when we learn he's the one who's playing this party we're all kind of like nervously like whoa it's gonna be crazy like whoa mm -hmm. and so okay so we're in the parking lot we've, we've talked to shotgun guy we're progressing through the doorway there's two flights of stairs. You got to walk up both flights of stairs to get to like the top where you enter. But there's a landing after the first flight of stairs, right? There's like a landing with a doorway. So we're all single file, making our way up these stairs, just completely baffled. Like, what is happening? What is this? And how is this going to be fun? And as we each get to the first landing, you can see into the room. It's a dark room, but there's enough light you can see into it. Mm -hmm. And the image in that room that you get as you skate right past it, continue up the stairs, is like eight or ten naked middle-aged guys lounging around with cigars and shots of liquor, <laughs> what it looks like. And I don't mean like in bathrobes or wearing boxers or even like towels wrapped around. Mm -hmm. fully naked, uh -huh, uh -huh. middle-aged, all very hairy, of varying degrees of like a sort of balding, sort of like slicked back hair, all with cigars, bottles of vodka on the table, all of them, you know, have shot glasses in front of them, just sitting there. Is it a bath? <laughs> is, is it like a big sauna? It's just a dark room. It's just a dark room? Are they watching something? Are no, they just they're sitting... talking in in hushed tones, very casually, Why calmly hushed? sitting there talking. What? <laughs> okay. This building you're in is this labeled? Is this like a no, place that? No, <laughs> not a sign anywhere. Not on the parking lot. Not in the exterior of this building. Literally no indication whatsoever. So that's our very first hint <laughs> at what we're about to be doing for our friend's bachelor party. <laughs> <laughs> wow. okay. So we continue up the stairs. You walk, everyone gets a turn at the show. You walk past the show of these gentlemen enjoying their cigars and vodka. You reach the top of the stairs. This was not explained to us at the time, but I'll just say because I'm telling you the story and I know everything now. We reach the top of the stairs and we reach the entrance of the Russian bathhouse where we are celebrating my friend's bachelor party. Oh, see, I thought the naked men was at the third floor. I didn't know they were like halfway up. You just walked past a doorway and yeah. peered in locked eyes with eight to 10 naked men. Yeah, yeah. All right. What we didn't know when we were on the stairs is that we were just peering into our own future. <laughs> we had no idea. <laughs> It was doppelganger versions of everyone in your party. It's like the movies where they meet the alternate versions like, oh. <laughs> I didn't know Cleveland Russian bathhouses were a thing until now. It's just the one, man. <laughs> the, the one. one. As there far as I one. know, this is yeah. the, all the Russian guys in Cleveland. <laughs> Got to go to the one place if yeah. you want a bath. I wonder how difficult it is to find local Russian bathhouses with which I to have bachelor party. don't think they're on Yelp. 
Like I would imagine a lot of them are similar to this one where it, it's like a private establishment, right? The reason you don't say anything or talk to anyone, it's not like a licensed business. It's like, you know, it's like a hush hush thing. You can only go if you know where it is and you know what to do and you know how much it costs. Cause like, just like with the parking lot, we get to the top of the stairs, not a word. Cousin Leroy gets to the top of the stairs, whips out the huge mountain of cash again, locks eyes with a slicked back hair Russian dude who I assume is named Vlad, who's like standing at the top of the stairs like it's he's, you know, in charge or whatever. Okay. Is he also armed? No, well, probably, but not not like visibly. So not obviously, okay. Can't confirm. Leroy hands him God knows how much, like an enormous stack of cash, like enough money that if I had been handed that amount of money, I would have bought myself a tuxedo and rented a limousine because I wouldn't know what to do with it. Mm. It was just all of our collective pooled money, plus probably some bonus cash because he was an adult with a job so he could afford to spend money. (laughs) But he hands this dude the cash and no explanation, no words. The guy just nods at him and Leroy's like, all right, we're in. And Leroy's like, all right, keep, just follow me. I know where we go next. We go into what is basically a locker room. It doesn't feel like a locker room, but there's like places to put your stuff. It's intended to be a locker room where a random smattering of other strangers just sort of like in the process of getting naked or getting clothes on. And at this point, Leroy looks around and is like, all right, boys, strip down. There's no, no boxers. There's no, he's naked. And we all kind of look at him for a second and we're like, what? <laughs> You know, with our eyes, we say this, and he's like, no, that's the rules, man. No swimsuits, no shorts or anything. Like, strip down. It's cool. Everyone's, everyone here get, knows what those are the rules. It's cool. And we're all like, look, I'm 22 years old. I've known these dudes that we're here with, except for you, for like eight of those years. I've never seen any of their penises, and I don't think they've seen my penis. So why now? Why in this moment is this when we're all going to share that very private, personal part of ourselves there's not really any discussion but we all stare at him for a second longer and eventually he's like look there's towels okay so if you really don't want to get the full experience get naked put a towel around your waist that's allowed and we're like good towels <laughs> fine <laughs> the towel situation is not great though i gotta be honest <laughs> <laughs> so not. like i'm sure we've all experienced that thing where you're you're like at a hotel or you're at someone's house you're a guest there's a towel for you and you get out of the shower and the towel's like not big enough mm-hmm. these are like the smallest version of that you can imagine my friends who are all like normal sized people the towel is barely barely big enough goes around them uh, you know overlaps maybe a few inches maybe it goes like halfway down their thighs i'm not a normal sized person I'm a large person, and there are no large towels. <laughs> the towel for me goes around my waist like just. Like if you had a safety pin, you could probably <laughs> pin it together, but it's not like overlapping. I think it went lower than like the bottom of my butt crack, but I can't see that part of me, and I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I basically didn't have a towel. I might as well have left it, and I eventually <laughs> abandoned it because it was more inconvenient to try and keep this tiny hand towel wrapped around my nethers <laughs> than to just get naked and just be like, screw it. I gotta ask, up to this point, did you guys question Leroy at all about where you were going prior to getting here, no. what you guys were going to be doing? No. Any questions? Nothing. No! <laughs> he, okay. Well, because so the communication wasn't from Leroy, right? Like, yeah, yeah. James, the actual best man, our friend James, was like, we're going to Cleveland. It's going to be fun. Uh, and everyone obviously is like, what are we doing? What are we doing? We've seen, we've seen a sports game or something. Like, we're going somewhere cool. And he's like, I asked my cousin, and he's from Cleveland. He knows a place. He, he knows all the places, but he knows a couple fun ones for a bachelor party. And we were like, oh, what is it? And he's like, eh, he didn't tell me, but I trust Leroy. And we trusted James. <laughs> all right. All right. So... So you abandon your towel. <laughs> so we're all basically naked. I mean, even for the other guys, the towels not do anything. If you're wearing a short towel like that and you sit down, I think we all can understand the physics of how inadequate that size of a towel is to actually cover anything. We were all effectively naked. So that was like a level of discomfort that none of us were emotionally prepared for. Mm-hmm. We're very traditionally repressed people. I still am. We weren't ready, but like we have no choice. We're in this place. I assume at this point, if I walk out, having not partaken of the bathhouse amenities, I will offend them and they might uh, shoot me. Maybe shotgun guy doesn't let you leave until you've done everything. I don't know. So like, we don't belong here. 
and I'm not talking to anybody. I don't know if they speak English or not. So we all just lean into it, right? Mm -hmm. No choice now. We only brought two cars. because I oh, And I will say, we will be drinking. We have been drinking. There were designated drivers. Each car that we had with us had a designated driver. There were a couple of friends yeah. who didn't drink anyway. So they were like, nah, I don't care. I'll drive. I, I won't drink. So we're not like being irresponsible. But the rest of us, thank God, there's a lot of vodka. Russian people and vodka. I thought it was like a meme. I thought it was like an internet meme, right? Like mm -hmm. Russians, ooh, Russians love vodka, everything. They do, man. <laughs> Everything comes with vodka. I have been to Russia one time. I went to St. Petersburg with my family. Hmm. And I was 17 or 18 years old. And every time we ate at any restaurant, every place at the table had a, a shot of vodka set up with it. Even for children, doesn't matter. <laughs> like, there's just vodka everywhere. And not like they're trying to get kids to drink. They're just like, when you set a place, it's like plate, fork, knife, spoon, napkin, vodka, water. <laughs> That's why that's how you set a place. It's not at all a joke. Russian people love vodka. Hmm. And uh, what's these... the legal drinking age in Russia? Is it just yes? I don't know. I would assume there is one, but it's vodka is not even on the list of things you can't drink. You just drink vodka if you want. Vodka. <laughs> okay. you just... I don't know. Right. I have no idea. So you guys are naked, abandoning your towels. Towels aren't working. You got the vodka. Is anyone clinging to their towel? Like, just out of desperation, they're making it work. <laughs> They've tied two towels together. Yeah, a couple of the guys are definitely more uncomfortable. I'm, like, totally screwed, right? Yeah, like, yeah. my waist is too big. So I am, I am one of the earliest adopters of, like, fuck it. Yeah, fuck yeah. It's fine. Uh -huh. But this place... So all of this setup, it's the most uncomfortable situation that most of us has been in with each other. This place is amazing. And since I've left, I've dreamed about going back to it. I kid you not, the stuff, a couple things we'll get to that are a little sketchy, but the stuff in this place, the main attractions are so good. I dream about going back to them. What is it? What's here? It's a third floor of a building. How There can't be like a roller yeah, coaster running through this thing. Mm -hmm. At mm -hmm. best, it's like a residential building. At best, it's like a kitchen that they converted into like a steam room. They got a pot of water boiling in the back. I cannot imagine a world where this is that amazing. Yeah, me either. My image of this is like a really sketchy staircase that has like a couple doors along it and it like wraps around and you open one of the doors. There's just a bunch of naked dudes sitting in a circle not doing anything not mm -hmm. even talking just sitting around in a circle naked you go upstairs to the locker smoking room. and drinking oh, smoking and drinking okay smoking and drinking i don't even picture they have a table they're just sitting there like on these old like worn out couches like with a cigar and a shot of vodka mm -hmm. you go upstairs to the locker room you strip down you grab one of the four hand towels and try to cover yourself doesn't work. You open this magical door and all of a sudden the place is good? That is 100% <laughs> accurate. Okay, well... What you're what? forgetting is <laughs> this house is located in Cleveland right, right. and it has a basement. Uh, mm. And what is in the basement we don't is know. The, the largest steam room sauna thing that I've ever been in and an enormous ice pool. And the main attraction of this place is you go and you sit in the steam room, and it's so hot. It's like a furnace. I have been mm. in saunas before. This was literally like you were staring into the mouth of an open furnace, and you could feel the heat blasting you from across the room. The hottest room I've ever been in, and you literally sit in that room. Leroy taught us this. You sit in that room until you feel like you're dehydrated, until you feel like you can't breathe. You're breathing this hot, heavy air. You feel like your skin is going to actually burst into flames. You sit in there until you physically can't stand it. And then you jump up and you go run in the ice pool. It's like you jump in, huge gasp. It's like in the movies when people fall into the ocean and it's frigid and icy. You feel like you can't move. It shocks your entire body. You stay in that until you can't stand it. You climb out and get back into the hot room. You go back and forth between these two extremes. And the first one is terrible. The f when we walked into the steam room the first time, I was like, oh my god, I hate this. Like, oh, this is terrible. This is uncomfortable. It hurts. It's too hot. And then we jumped in the ice, and I was like, this is worse. This is not This is not repair the damage of the steam room. This is, I hate this even more. Yeah. After doing this for, it felt like a long time, but it was probably maybe half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour at the most, back and forth and back and forth. About how long did you spend in each room along the way? Like, it was like, how many minutes in each? It was longer in the sauna. So you spent maybe five to 10 minutes in the sauna, and then you literally go jump in the ice water, and that's maybe 60 seconds to a couple minutes, depending on what you could stand. Okay, then you... So okay. it's 
a lot of shorter time in the water and there's a little bit of time after the water where you sort of drip for a second and like regain your composure go back into the steam room so you've done like five or six rotations of this at least yeah in half an it, hour. i would okay. say probably six or seven times in each room back and forth okay. i have never felt that relaxed in my entire life after the first couple of transitions back and forth i did not care that i was surrounded by a bunch of naked strangers my friends and i were desperately trying not to look at each other's junk that like i was rubbing naked thighs with people as they were pushing past me to sit like i didn't care the sensation of that shocking your body like that the most intense relaxation i have ever felt it was like exhausting how relaxing it was and like that's the part of all the rest of this that is kind of intimidating and kind of ridiculous and we're not even done with all the stuff that's a little concerning that part i think about that and i'm like man i would do all that again to feel that way to get that relaxation to feel like not a muscle in my entire body had any tension at all crazy the rest of it aside that's amazing and if you ever get the opportunity highly recommend it so you but eventually that i'll uh, go ahead i was just gonna say you gotta know a guy named leroy you gotta go to some parking lot in cleveland you gotta you gotta go up this yeah, well, mario 64 ass staircase that how does it get to the basement you never clarified that there you was a walk... separate staircase to the basement <laughs> there's another staircase yeah well okay there's so, the naked yeah. staircase and there's the one where you just walk by the naked people yes there's the haunted staircase where if you look in the room in the second floor don't look in the room you will never go up or down you will keep walking and they will look at you and they will get closer and you will be up and down the stairs and you'll never go anywhere and it's just like you're trapped in that zone and then there's the other staircase so after you do this rotation you know however many times and you're super relaxed do you get your own, like, dark room that you get to go just sit in with your friends naked with? Like, do you get to replace those guys in that room so that someone else can walk by horrified seeing you naked sitting there relaxed? Essentially, yes. Great. I was hoping. We did not go to that specific room. We went to another room that where there was actually a table because the, the process that follows the relaxing sauna ice bath stuff is you go first to Vlad, who's the guy who cooks you steak. Um... <laughs> Wait, wait, Vlad, the guy at the top of the stairs? No, it's a different guy, but I just you know, called him all Vlad because that works <laughs> all for right, me. All right, so Vlad too. Vlad, the steak guy. So we went and we picked our, our lounge room, our post-relaxation lounge room. So you don't order. There's no sides. There's no, there's no <laughs> input. Vlad shows up with a platter of plates. Each plate has one fucking huge steak <laughs> on it piled with garlic literally like three inch high pile of garlic and he just hands them out and he's like here's your steak and then they set bottles of vodka on the table god and so vlad the vlad the steak guy brings you your steak you eat your steak obviously and you don't ask any questions then the next guy vlad the cigars and vodka guy comes <laughs> and makes sure that you have enough vodka, right? Because you might have drank all your vodka. He comes, gives you a couple more bottles, makes sure you're set, and then hands everyone a cigar. You don't pay for anything. No questions asked. There are not types of cigars. I've smoked cigars. I enjoy a cigar. Usually it's like, oh, I have my favorite brand or I have my favorite specific cigar. He just had a box of some cigars with, with Russian writing on it and you got a cigar and you smoked your cigar and you drank some vodka. And then the last guy, I assume is Vlad's cousin, <laughs> Vlad, <laughs> offers <laughs> to rub you in a dark room <laughs> For a maximum relaxation experience, and I'm not exaggerating this, from our room where we're lounging and eating, all naked, by the way, hard to forget that for me, but I want to make sure everyone listening understands <laughs> that we're naked this entire time. That's the only time in my life I've ever eaten an entire steak naked. <laughs> Smoking a cigar has never felt so terrifying because when you smoke a cigar, ashes fall off of it. Ashes are hot, and I was naked. So I, you have to smoke a cigar like it might kill you if it touches you, because it might. Because if I burn my ball sack with an ash from a cigar, I'm going to be very upset. And then finally, Vlad's cousin Vlad comes in and is like, you want a massage? And we're all kind of like, I don't know if this is part of the service or if this dude is here for his own purposes. Literally, I didn't partake in this. So at this point, I was so relaxed. I was like, I'm good. And I'm still going to be naked with you touching me. And I don't need that. I'm fine. But some of the guys did it. And they described it as he led them out of the room down like a back hall to like the other side of the building. It gets increasingly darker. He leads you to a dark 
back room in the back of the house, a small room where there's just a massage table and some very dim lighting and you and Cousin Vlad. And he gives you a massage. And apparently, it's a fine massage. But like, I don't know if I'd sign up for that even knowing what was about to happen. Because I don't... <laughs> I don't feel I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> What's wrong, Bob? What's wrong? What's wrong with That's, that situation that you've just described? I, I feel obligated to remind everyone: you're naked this whole time, <laughs> you're dripping with steak juice and cigar ash burns all over your <laughs> naked body. Uh, look, it was delightful. The the <laughs> sounds great, man. The sauna and ice bath, literally, I will remember for the rest of my life. I remember it vividly. And I don't remember all the dicks in that room. I remember what it felt like to look into the furnace that the heat was coming out of. And when they would pour more water in there, and it would steam like crazy. And I remember how the ice bath, it was really small. And, like, you were kind of crowded with all your naked friends. But, like, it felt so intense. It felt crazy. I would recommend it. But my main question, I guess, is would you do it <laughs> knowing knowing going in what is going to happen? Would you drive to the gravel parking lot in Cleveland with the chain link fence and the dude with the shotgun and put yourself through that just to see if what I'm saying is true about how relaxing it was? I don't know. Order of operations here. You, you drive in to mm -hmm. a sketchy looking unmarked place. Mm -hmm. The first encounter you have is someone pulling out a wad of cash, paying off a guy sitting in his car, not like at a guard post or anything official, yeah, just, just sitting car. in his car with a shotgun. You walk in a building, up some stairs, pass by a bunch of naked dudes, naked hairy dudes. Mm -hmm. Strangers. You keep going. You come up to another guy who is handed a giant wad of cash, and then you walk into a room you have to strip. You reluctantly strip down, you put on your hand towels, don't cover anything, you go to the furnace room for a while, jump in the freezing water, furnace room, freezing water, basically this, like, what sounds like torture back and forth to the point where you're just, like, your body is so tortured, it's just, like, numb. It's just, like, I quit. You feel nothing. Relax. I don't care. Then you go to another room where another guy you haven't seen before comes in, gives you cigars and steak while you're drinking vodka naked with your friends. Mm-hmm. Another dude comes in, offers you a massage. So you encounter what? Like one, you, you actually have conversations with like four strangers. You pass by a whole bunch of other people that are naked doing the same thing you guys are. Is the ice bath sauna room, was that private? Was it just your group there at that time? No. <laughs> no, okay. No, the sauna was enormous. Like 40 dudes could sit. If you were like not touching, but as close together as you would want to sit to like another naked person, you could fit easily like 40, probably 35, 40 dudes in there. The ice bath was like a little pool. It had like steps down into it. And it was maybe 12 person pool. It was not big. So there was kind of a line. It was kind of a rotation. <laughs> Sometimes if the ice bath was full, you come out of the sauna and like wait for a second while the guys are rotating through or whatever. But like everyone in the entire establishment was in one sauna and one pool collectively. The room, this is all dudes here? All men? All dudes. Okay. Not a woman in the entire place from the parking lot to anywhere in the building. The room post sauna was quasi-private. No one else was in our room. There could have been like a couple more people, you know, across the room or whatever. And the doors were open, but it was like our little room where we got to hang out. Mm -hmm. This doesn't sound like my kind of establishment, so I don't know that I would voluntarily go. Even with the level of realization you've described, the rest of it sounds awkward enough to where I don't know. I don't know that I would sign up for that. I personally wouldn't go, but just because I know of a place with uh, less gun, probably less Russians, and definitely less hairy strangers, um, and that's just a Korean spa. Mm. Uh, because what you described is exactly the same as a Korean spa with just the same level of nudity, but many more different types of pools to dip in. What about steak? Uh, they don't have snake, but they got a snack bar. And Ooh, so, bar. Bob, if you are looking for that experience to be recreated, you know, all you got to do is come down to L.A. There's an amazing Korean spa where you and I, we can get naked with a room full of Korean people. And, you know, they may not love vodka as much, but they love, love soju. And Dude, soju is delicious. Exactly. So if you want to pound some soju, you Don't won't get... say that like that. What? What? If you want to get naked with me and just pound some soju, 
What's wrong with that? Nothing. Go ahead. I want to pound some soju. Although, the mystique of this freaking clown car ass house, <laughs> there is no physical way that, <laughs> that all of this stuff could fit in one building. But I can show you where that is. I feel like you're setting this up as a bit. It's not a bit. I sincerely would want to go do that. Yes. Because I, absolutely. It's fantastic. I would assume the experience is very similar from what you're describing the pools and stuff. Yeah. Literally, I told you this whole story and you've heard all the concerning bits. And despite all of that, this is a great experience for me. Yeah. Purely because of how I felt after doing the ice bath and sauna stuff, I would 100% to come to LA and go to a Korean spa. The snack bar sounds delightful. I love soju. Soju's delicious. I, you like know, honestly, pineapple soju. I'm sure there's one in San Francisco near you. I b would believe there might be one in many other cities because just the whole concept. I know actually that that Russians love the whole naked thing, and it might just oh, be that. You? I know it for a How fact. How do you know this about Russian people? Because well, he's because one third Russian. <laughs> no, oddly enough, but oh. Alex, my personal trainer, has told me a similar thing. But the way that it's set up, I believe that every single Russian bathhouse is exactly as you described, because he <laughs> also has he described the same experience? exactly. <laughs> He described the same thing. Maybe not, not like he, I didn't get as many details, but he told me that there was a place near his gym, just a place that he could take me. Now I know what that place was because he told me like, oh, it's like a bathhouse, and I was like, oh, like a Korean bathhouse. I was like, what's a Korean bathhouse like? He's like, oh, people get naked. And it's like, yeah, the naked thing. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, uh, well. I mean, that's what I assumed. It was such a specific and refined experience. I figured there was no way that this is like the only establishment that exists in the world, in the U.S. even, yeah, that's yeah. like that. It's obviously, this is how Russian bathhouses are run. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not here to question a single thing that they did to us. Yeah, yeah. I will say, we still have no idea how much money Cousin Leroy actually spent on anything. Mm. There's no way that like the 200 bucks that each of us chipped in covered that because we lived like kings in that house of mirrors. And I don't know how long we were there. I do know that when we left, shotgun guy was still there chilling and it was dark. And we started this with like an early lunch, like yeah, a, yeah. like a craft beer brunch. So we were there for, uh, I don't know, five hours, six hours. Who could tell? I have yeah. no concept. I have a couple questions still before, before you wrap up here. Yeah. How did everyone else, like when you guys were got, dressed you walked out to the car was everyone feeling like oh man that was that was cool or was there some like traumatized wide open stairs like what was what was the general consensus we never spoke of it again <laughs> even <laughs> as you left so i will say i was when we were hanging out after the sauna when we had dinner well whatever we ate steak and drank and had cigars we were hanging out it was great everyone was so chilled out everyone was completely over the uncomfortableness of you know how repressed we were and how we felt about being naked around each other and the vibe Vodka helped with that, and the cigars helped with that. It was just like everyone had a great time. While we were in it, it was like a party. It was great. It was a great bonding thing. The moment we all had like our clothes back on, and we looked at each other, and we looked like ourselves, it was like silence. We filed out of the locker room, single file down the stairs, through the parking lot, into the cars. Nobody locked eyes or said a goddamn word, as far as I recall, until we were like at the hotel. And like we got to the hotel, everyone gets out of the cars and they're like, ah, you guys want to get some dinner or something? Like nothing happens. <laughs> and I've never talked about this with any of those dudes. But it's like the shared experience thing that I know happened and is definitely not a fever dream. But yeah, no, it never again did we speak of it or talk about anything that happened in that place. It's crazy. Do you still talk to the groom or the best man? Yeah, we're all still buddies. We're spread out. Obviously, I live in California now. One of them lives in Indiana. One of them lives in Iowa. One of them lives in Cleveland, actually. Now he moved from Columbus to Cleveland. But... So addicted to the bathhouse. He had to be close. <laughs> I would assume. But we're all still friends. We stayed friends and, and hung out plenty of times after that. But but never naked again. Never naked. And then we don't talk about it. Mm. It's a one-time event. So if they're listening right now, then uh, some memories were brought up that they maybe didn't want to have. I'm going to recommend this to those specific guys and just be like, <laughs> hey, I made this thing with some friends. Like, I, I The topic I thought might interest you. You should check this out. 
and I would want to just see their face. Yeah. <laughs> like, like as I lay out the story, and I'm sure they'd realize immediately, like, oh no, <laughs> he's gonna tell the story about the bathhouse. I thought that was a fever dream because it starts at the with the bachelor party, and they all they all know what happened. You know what happened. <laughs> they all know. <laughs> I guess the most important question is, what did the groom think of it? Oh, he loved it. Oh, he loved it. He loved it. He's a big hippie. So he was way less hung up about the nudity than a lot of the rest of us were. It was still kind of weird because we had never been naked together as friends. But like he was immediately like, yes, he is also Polish. So he's a lot of Polish family. He's he's very like proud Polish person. Mm -hmm. So some parts of the experience connected with him. Vodka is big in Poland, I think. And he just he loved it. So Mm -hmm. that's good. That was a big win because he had a great time. Good, good. How was the steak? Was the steak delicious? actually pretty good mm. i couldn't tell you what cut it was because it was so smothered in garlic yeah but like top steaks i've had i don't know top 10 maybe good steak good steak i would love to get a layout of this building because as you've described it it sounds like like a clown fun house like yeah like a house of, like i don't know staircases everywhere pool and furnace there's a somewhere there's a kitchen where steaks are being made all of these dark ro- there's like three lights in the whole building in my brain it, it just proves to me it's that it's not inaccurate it must not be that difficult to build the murder room because someone had to be commissioned <laughs> for that no one asks question probably the people that built that sauna are in the cement foundation of it that's amazing that that can even happen do you know that whenever i built my office that i'm in Hmm. the guys who built it like hesitantly approached me to ask me what this room was being built for because i had them put in like so much soundproofing i had them build this silent room in the basement with like easy to clean floors and stuff and they're like (laughs) you just have to lock eyes with them and be like i need a very particular space to do my laundry well, I told him how much space I needed. I was like, I need the ceiling to be a certain height, so that way if I need to stand up and really move around, like, like i got space. Because my brain, thing like VR, like, I need to have outlets on every wall, internet cable. I, I need to be able to access anything from anywhere in this room. I need the lighting to be, you know, pretty good, where I can, you know, daylight, white light, I can kind of flip between. So I came over to inspect the room, and after they put the soundproofing in, like, there was nothing else in the room, nothing on the walls, and you'd walk in, and immediately your head felt, like, off. Oh, because of the way like sound was bouncing around in the room it was just like it felt so uncomfortable to be in here and like sound didn't travel in or out or even in like you know throughout the room like normally and they're like hey so it's not really our business or our place but i gotta ask like uh what's this room gonna be used for (laughs) because they thought i was building a kill room Uh, sounds like a kill room i mean it still can be a kill room you don't let your dreams be. oh very easily very easily could be but uh yeah, kill rooms wouldn't be hard at all to make, but this building with, like, the 18 staircases, the stakes, the cigars, the naked men rooms, like, just the layout baffles me. In my brain, I cannot picture out a logical way that this is laid out. You have some great stories, Bob. You have some great stories. Good stories and stories and stories. And stories. All right, so which one of us won, Mark or me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, look, Man. that's an awkward way to shoehorn that in, but I've been waiting for any idea that even remotely created an opportunity to use that, because that's like one of the funniest stories that's happened to me, I think. Hmm. Everything everything that happened. And I hope you enjoyed it, but it's over now. We're back to real current times, us. So nudity. How do you guys feel about nudity? I feel like... A, our country is very repressed about it, right? We have a lot of laws and regulations where you can be nude, what can be shown on TV. But like, how do you how do you feel about it? You like nudity? You talking being naked in the flesh or seeing nudity in others around us? Both being and seeing nakedness uh, being. is what we're gonna discuss. Being and seeing nakedness, got it. Okay. I love it when I like what I'm seeing. Because it is different being naked in a place versus if you are in that place and you see another person who's naked. Different types of feelings come up. Okay. I would imagine. All right. Well, I have an occurrence where being and seeing nakedness uh, was the de facto state of being. Yeah. Do you want a title for it? Sure. I have an inkling about this one what this is i think the title is and then my skin was rubbed clean off <laughs> oh okay maybe i don't know what story this wait is. no oh. i got a better title <laughs> okay. Oh, okay okay quote, quote and then he flipped me over uh, 
Ew. Ooh. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Intriguing. I don't have any competing story for this, so I'll call my title N A. <laughs> <laughs> I like your honesty. N A. That's probably worth points. Is it not applicable? N A. I feel like I'm losing this somehow. <laughs> it's okay. There's plenty of plenty of activity to come where you can gain points. Mm. Uh, but Mark, I want to know why he flipped you over. Okay, so this is my own bathhouse story, which I'm not sure if I've talked about this on the podcast. I think I talked about on Three Peens way back in the day. Yeah, I remember it way back. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you if it was on the podcast. They will, yeah, they absolutely will. We are getting older. It's hard to remember. God forbid they hear something that they've heard before. <laughs> You've said those words in that order before. No, my ears. Make me new content. <laughs> I'm bored. Ten years of being on the internet. How dare you repeat yourself one time yeah uh, yeah so just this once was... i've sorry continue <laughs> so anyway they're they're in korea it's uh it's a thing that they have bathhouses it's a thing in many cultures and in these bathhouses you are naked because you know i guess why wouldn't you be and there's various little pools in the bathhouse that are warm and cold and have different jets and different temperatures different salinities salt levels uh different things in the water and various different like saunas that you can go into but i've been to them before you know i've been to them in korea i've been to them here in la uh, but when I went to Korea last time and I was at the bathhouse, my cousin said something very interesting to me. He said, you want massage? And I go, I don't mind a massage. I like massage. And he goes, oh, you want massage? And because uh, he doesn't speak perfect English, but he knows his way around. And uh, I said, yes. So we go to the bathhouse. We say, oh, can we relax and we have a good time? And then my turn comes to get a massage. Uh, and I didn't know exactly where it was before. And when we entered into the bathhouse, we walked past these two mats there and there was someone getting scrubbed, like someone getting washed, like physically washed. Like by another person? By another person, yeah. There was another person. The only non-nude person in this entire bathhouse was the person doing the scrubbing. He had shorts on. Uh, so it was a bit of an oddity, but I passed it by because I was like, I know massages from the Korean bathhouse here in LA. You go into a separate room and it's yeah. you're closed in the clothes. They give you the clothing that you wear and the uh, co-ed levels, and then you get a massage. And I'm like thinking, oh, that's what it's going to be. But then my turn comes up, and my and guides me to where the massage is going and he guides me right to the tables that the other guy was getting scrubbed down on. And the guy <laughs> has his scrub rag and he flips it over his shoulder a few times and then slaps the bed and he's like... Hop up. Is it the same rag that he was scrubbing the other person with? He dipped it in a bucket. Oh, okay. He washed it off. He cleaned it. <laughs> sure, sure. All good. All good. So this is the equivalent of like uh, getting your car washed and you go through and the guy like sprays your car a little bit. Then the automated thing happens, mm -hmm. which is this guy with a rag the whole way through. Yeah, Perfect. pretty much. Uh, now that I think about it, I do not think he... <laughs> I don't think he... I I don't think he changed the wash. Cloth. He just <laughs> rang it out, dipped it in the bucket. It's fine. He smacked the table. What do you think the smacking is for? Waste not, want not. <laughs> yeah, when it, when it, when I got up there, he got a bucket of water and he just splooshed it over the top and, you know, water ran off and clean instantly. No problem there. Wow. So I, I lie face down on this table. I'm I'm mortified, but I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I'll get it over with. It's a, it's, it is what it is. And this guy, like... This guy went at me like he hated me. <laughs> everything about me, everything that I stood for was writ upon my skin and he needed to remove it. And I just remember the most incredible pain of just just the cheese grater of it. And my back was bad enough, you know, and he, he gets every part of my back, top to bottom. Fully naked here too, right? Yeah. Which means that that rag had got every part of the guy before. Yes, I'm realizing that now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, are we ruining this cherished memory for you not a crevice <laughs> unexplored <laughs> yeah, cherished memory. yeah yeah exactly before now it was a great memory now it's concerning yeah uh so then he says uh some words to me that i didn't understand at the time now i know he was telling What's me your to safe turn. word <laughs> yeah, God, i hope not because i didn't know it and i didn't say it that's for sure but he's telling me to flip over but i'm not understanding it so he kind of like like digs his hand underneath like my torso and my legs and he flips me over and I'm like, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. I he man caked you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and then he, he continues to scrub, and I'm like, okay, I'm face up naked. My ghibli bits are all out in the open, but you know, it is what it is. Here we go. And he, he goes just as hard on my upper, my front. And then when he gets to my legs, he does this, what I can only describe as a long, smooth motion that ended with him pretending like my balls were not there. And he <gasps> plows from toe to waist. <laughs> <laughs> through smashing my balls out of the way like bumper cars <laughs> boom and <laughs> getting in my inner thigh <laughs> I can only tell you this guy was extremely <sighs> thorough because it took three impacts to get my whole inner thigh oh. on one leg before he switches to the other side. Oh my god. And you'd think he'd start on the outside of the leg to give my balls a break after being smashed to bits. No, he starts on the inside on that side and just wham! Same wham! direction all the way. <laughs> just full connection. I like oh. it's just he didn't give a oh, shit. With his like fist or just with like part of the towel? How much it, was this is basically a punch in the nuts basically imagine like it's the kind of rag where it has a little hand it can slip over your hand on both mm, ends and okay. he, he he's kind of like tensioning it to push it up and around me and, and scrape off so he's kind of like <laughs> cupping both <laughs> fingers it's like his knuckles <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> just like that and so play a knuckleball ah, yeah, pretty much yeah so it was over before i knew it and i swear when i got up he had a cigarette somehow i don't know how but he had one <laughs> was it good for you this is not even a joke i i don't think i like my brain is having trouble remembering mm. it because i was in a bit of agony but i swear he might have had it the whole time just like he might have slapped the table with a cigarette but i only remembered it afterwards when he was done they don't use the hot rocks there they use the cigarette ashes to help heat you up <laughs> Yeah, design. then he pressed it into my chest. He <laughs> puts it out. <laughs> <laughs> You look over, there's just a pile of cigarette butts on the floor where he'd been doing that the whole time. Yeah, so whereas Bob's uh, bathhouse story was full of, like, wasn't there steak in, like, a room with cigars? Oh, yeah, like a huge steak and cigars and vodka. Hey, none of <laughs> I got my balls batted around a bit and then sent on my way. That's so weird. You get a cigarette and a letter saying, like, if you tell anyone what happened here, we'll find you and we'll do it again. I don't think that's that... Like the practice itself of being naked and getting the massage thing, sure. And like, mm -hmm. you know, especially because that's traditional or whatever, it's a normal custom. That's not that crazy, but the punching of the nuts, <laughs> I guess I don't know if it'd be more or less awkward if he was like, oh, let me scoot your balls over here real quick. <laughs> But that's less painful. Holds them up with his left hand as he punches your taint with his right. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer if they had some sort of ball spoon or something and he was like, just <laughs> flip these over and hold them in place no, so no. that I can scrub you without punching you in the sack repeatedly. He just hands you a ladle and he's like, move your balls. <laughs> he can't speak English enough for me to understand. It would never quit. He realized the quickest path. <laughs> <laughs> he looks up at you from your feet and is like, sack, you <laughs> sack. You want keep sack? You want sack no hurt? Huh? Did you make any noise or were you just like biting your lip just like, supposed to happen this is normal <laughs> i'm pretty sure i just tried to grin and bear it but who knows what happened i kind of blanked <laughs> out there and and to remind you guys it's not in a private room this is literally on the edge of the hot tubs <laughs> well i imagine this is the entrance like people are coming to make their yes. appointments they just walk by you being yes. punched in the ball a bunch of guys smoking cigarettes like mm. <laughs> The door to get in there is just like two steps away. That's the main entrance. <laughs> oh, you turn man. and you're there. <laughs> oh, welcome to our bathhouse and massage park. Oh, my balls! <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to make an appointment? <laughs> yep. Well, not the entrance to the building, the entrance to the male side of the bathhouse. It's just a warning for what you're about to get in the male area. Oh, okay. So it is split up. It's not male, female in the same area. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not like that. Is there like an age limit? Because I can't imagine you could have like people underage. There were kids running around. Yeah, kids running around. Okay. So it's different. Like That would never fly here, at least not now. I mean, I would imagine maybe the massage guy could just be like, I don't do kids. But maybe he doesn't care. Yeah, it's probably a cultural thing. Probably just a cultural thing, yeah. But it's just like a strange place. So it's interesting, right? This is kind of exactly the sort of thing that inspired me to pick this as a topic for today. Because clearly, 
that's part of Korean culture. I have no idea how popular it is still, but like that came from a place of being very popular, like the main way, I guess, that you got to bathe yourself at a certain time period, right? I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So like, it was a, I know that like Romans had bathhouses and stuff too, right? Like that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And communal shit rooms where you could all sit on your side by side toilets and have a conversation while you shat. Oh, Randy, that's a particularly bad one today. I oh, know I had chili. And you wipe your ass with the communal vinegar rag. <laughs> There you go, all done, yours. I mean, literally. Just on the toilet seat. <laughs> there you go, clean it off. You know where you don't see places like that, and where it's not part of the culture in any way, is in our country. I sort of know some of the answer to this, but I'll pose the question anyway. What happened to America that everyone is so concerned and upset about any nudity whatsoever? I didn't even start with nudity, like, not way, way back, but, like, even during, like, my grandma's heyday, right? Like, when Elvis stood and they showed him, like, shaking his leg on camera, that was, like, a big deal Shit. for that to be <laughs> something on television where he just like did yeah, the leg little shit. dance like, that he did that's too sensual for television like things are i'm too aroused by that <laughs> yeah i can only imagine what the women are feeling <laughs> ah! and now we download games like cyberpunk where you go to character creations just like here's a nude body what body parts do you want how big you want your dick you pick yeah you want big dick small all right you want a ladle for your balls you want me to punch them <laughs> anyway yeah i i don't know so with that in mind and considering that it's it's really weird to me how most of the world is pretty chill and it's not like in in other parts of the world there weren't standards of like how you comport yourself in public you know showing an ankle was racy in uh, victorian europe or whatever like there were standards but also they would have bathhouses and stuff like that and nude beaches and and it wasn't that big of a deal excluding a certain context until eve bit that apple i guess I mean, that that's what I was going to say is really just like, doesn't it boil down to mostly religious kind of like ideals and standards? But I guess it spills beyond that. But I think it, a lot of it does probably stem from like religious purity, you know, yeah, well, that's like this ideal of modesty. Puritanical, right? It's a puritanical worldview coming from, I think, I haven't double checked this, the Puritans who came to the new world and sort of at, sort of at the heart of society here. I don't know. Anyway, with all that in mind, and with the hilarious dual bathhouse stories uh, on our minds as well, obviously we have to do a power ranking of the top 10 places that I have arbitrarily brainstormed where you'd be really uncomfortable being naked or seeing naked. <laughs> Before we jump in, I, you know, I wasn't a bathhouse, but I went and got a massage recently because of my pinched nerve. I was hoping like a massage would help did they get, make it better. Did they do something to you? Well, so when I went in for the massage, I didn't know what the, it was a new place I hadn't gone to. And I was like, well, I don't know what their thing is. Because so they, they like step out of the room like, if you want to get ready and get to the table, it's like, do I go fully nude here? Is this like an underwear? I don't know what to do. So I left my boxers on and the lady was like doing the massage and she was like, uh, I need to pull these down to get your butt. And I was like, what? She's like, I can you? And I was like, oh yeah, I can. She's like, you know what? I'll do it. And she just put an arm under my legs, lifted me up and then just yanked my underwear off. Oh, and then went and put it in the closet. She's like, there we go. I mean, problem solved. <laughs> I was getting ready to do it myself, but yeah, she just one arm like whoop, whoosh. I don't even know how she did it. She like gently tossed my legs with the arm so she could like slip it. It was pretty incredible. Well, what more could you ask for? Seems like a job well done to I'll me. Ask for her again is what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you thought of a story. What's the What's the title for it, Wade? I'll consider it. Uh, whoosh! There goes my undies. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, nice, nice. Yeah, fair. A short story, but it's the one I just remembered. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the power ranking of the top ten places I've arbitrarily brainstormed that you would be uncomfortable being naked or seeing naked people but people didn't fit. Uh, this is, it doesn't have to be a ranking. This is just a list of places I'm just wanting to talk about. Tier list. <laughs> it's not a tier list. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, maybe. People seem to like that. But anyway, and I didn't even know Mark was going to tell his uh, bathhouse story, but I wanted to start with a familiar place, given our discussion so far. Bathhouses. We can discuss being naked and also seeing naked people as separate concepts. But I'm curious. Were you uncomfortable naked in the bathhouse? One, one being what? The worst place to be naked? Ten being the best? One is the top place. Number one is the number one place you would be uncomfortable being naked. Uncomfortable. Oh. <sighs> 
man, I feel like can we move them around after we've made our determination? Yeah, no, this is like an active ranking type situation where we could move and rearrange and everything. I mean, I would rank it high for appropriateness of to be okay to be naked, and you would obviously see, but I wouldn't rank it as like number one because it wouldn't be my favorite place to be naked or see other people naked. Mm. But it's it's up there just because of normal. Wait, how are you ranking this? I would put it above top five. This is put, your number one place you would want to be naked? Not number one, but he said like towards the top. Yeah, top five. I, I just imagine there are some bad ones on your list. So I'm going to put it at four right now. Okay. I'll put it at four. All right, I disagree vehemently. I think it's at number three. I well, That's a very strong minor <laughs> difference of opinion. Without knowing the other nine, I know for a fact number three is where bathhouses belong. <laughs> I, I feel like bathhouse of the list that you don't know, but I do know, bathhouse <laughs> is the one that I would, I would feel most comfortable overall for sure. Yeah, me too. This should definitely be uh, you pick your number and it has to stay till the end because uh, like, I'll put it at four four but i'm almost dreading it because are there no better places on your uh, list? <laughs> maybe not a lot i'm gonna put it at four i'm gonna do i'll put mine too so i'm keeping it bathhouse at three bathhouse <laughs> excellent can't wait to see how i disagree with me later i even put bathhouse russian or otherwise i i, I knew it was coming apparently mm. okay well that was a softball you know that wasn't so bad and also i want to say you can choose to ignore or theorize about how you are naked but it's totally acceptable <laughs> to just discuss it in terms of i'm now in this place and i'm fully naked and you can ignore any explanation of how because some of these it may be difficult to get naked in a certain location <laughs> or hard to understand uh, visiting grandma at the retirement home <laughs> number one place the next one i'm going to go to is the gym where you regularly work out so this is like the planet fitness that you go to five times a week mm. uh, which am i working out naked maybe you're at the gym are other people naked or is it just us under normal circumstances no one else is naked and you can choose to have gotten naked no, no one else is naked <laughs> the, the the moment is you are currently buck naked maybe with socks and shoes so you don't lose any toes to falling weights but you're effectively 100 percent naked in the middle of a gym and no one else is naked and we're just we're just naked because in the middle of the workouts place of the gym yeah in the middle of like a, an evening workout lots of people are getting <laughs> off work the gym is pretty busy you know the machines are getting used and you are now naked maybe you're sitting on a machine maybe you're bending over to pick up your water bottle who knows i'm gonna put this i think mark went first last time so i'll go first this time i'm gonna put this one at a six Jim, only one naked. A bold choice, a bold choice. There's worse, there's worse places. I'm gonna put it at lower than bathhouse, but only by one. Mm. So five? Because I feel like if there was a case where I am naked in the middle of a gym, it's for a photo shoot or there's some event <laughs> that necessitates me to be naked in that moment. Mm. And I think that would be all right, because if I'm at the gym, then maybe it's a gym I've been going to regularly. I'm looking good, fit, swole, mm. and I'm in my best state. I'll put gym right below bathhouse at number five. See, I'm imagining it's like whenever you use the restroom sometimes, and like there's like a kid that comes in that doesn't understand how to like pee at the urinal, so he just drops his pants. <laughs> I imagine you're the guy at the gym who goes to like work out. You're like, man, this tank top's really affected my weightlifting. And just like you rip off everything. And everyone's just like, what the hell? And you're just but naked, bending over, taint out, dick up, whatever, doing your workout, and no one understands why this is happening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure, whatever. That still puts it at a five, even in that case. Even in that case, it's a five. I like it. Definitely a six. I also put it as a five. Mm. Damn it. Uh, uh, random happenstance, but that's fine. Yeah, me too. I said five. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm starting to wish I put it in bathhouse higher, but yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> that one was another pretty, pretty chill one. Pretty chill one. But all right, moving on. Moving on. Yeah. The third one we're gonna look look at and analyze is in front of family members outside of your immediate family. So like grandparents, aunts and uncles, something like it's like a family get together at home in the privacy of your home, but in front of six or more family members. Some of them are outside of your household. Hmm. Maybe you were taking a shower. And they're not naked. This is just us naked again. You are the only one who's naked. Everyone is hanging out, playing a board game, uh, having a drink, whatever. Why are we so into voyeurism? Is it? Well, that's not voyeurism. Is it? What's the one where you like to be naked? I think that's voyeurism. Is that voyeurism? I think. So yeah, maybe you were in the shower and you forgot a towel. Maybe someone burst into your room and then shenanigans ensued. Who knows? You are naked in front of a bunch of family. 
And they haven't reacted yet. They're just staring at you in shock. Okay, in shock. It's got to be cu- be because... <laughs> yeah, rationalize this for <laughs> There was some horrible insect crawling all over my clothes, or I spilled hot oil on myself, and it, I needed to rip it off. This is the safest place I could be. These are people that are willing to help me, and they know me, and it's all good, and I put it at a two. <laughs> I'm putting it at a two. You could, there can be no safer place. Maybe mm-hmm. they've seen me naked when I was a kid. I was yeah, a baby they've once. seen all that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was also going to say a two. I don't think that's that bad. Wow. Yeah. I was between two and four, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to. I think two because I, just being family, it's like that'll be that funny story you tell a few years down the road. But family, yeah, that's not that bad. Yep. Well, I also had that at a two. Ooh. Really? I wow. didn't think we'd be in such tight agreement on all of these. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea. Especially since Morgan, I don't know the list. <laughs> Uh, well, I imagine. <laughs> That's the idea is uh, that basically I had to is, you know, I would be a little embarrassed because it's a funny story and then people are going to talk about it forever because mm. it's like, ah, you remember that? Ah, stupid. But... It's really, that's one of the best places that could happen, probably. Could be way worse. Man, bathhouse sure looking like a more number one now, isn't it? <laughs> like, for example, uh, in the next example, uh-huh. what if you were fully nude and unaware that you were in the background of a live TV news broadcast? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're in your apartment and they're filming into your window. How clear is it that it's us? Yeah. A hundred percent clear. You are the closest subject in the background <laughs> and you are moving and, and clearly a naked person doing something as the reporter is talking about whatever the hell the reporter is talking about. So like if they were up against a building and there was a window and a curtain drew up in the window right behind where they were framed and you are there, but you don't see them. Your self-installed window covering slowly peeled off and sank to the floor all by itself and you are now fully naked in front of a fully clear see-through window 20 feet away from the camera that's filming the broadcast okay this one's four for me because i can spin this as like do you guys see what i did on the news oh man i'm the talk of the town (laughs) like i would totally make it sound like it was intentional even though it wasn't i'd be like everyone's gonna be talking about me now what a move i'm so confident in my looks man i was on the news naked number four (laughs) you know honestly you stole my thunder (laughs) well it was my turn to go first that's what happened i also am of the mind that i'm like all right if this is what it's gotta be if this is how my dick's gonna leak uh i guess you know there's no better way to do it than to own it (laughs) It would just be uh if it could be the talk of the town you know honestly i I would be okay with that if it had to happen if it was against my will it really depends on what i'm doing but i only have a three and a one left up in the upper (laughs) I really don't want to have to kick out. I've got one in five, so I feel Oh, man. None of these have been that bad yet. I'll put that at a six, though. I would rather that not be because I've I've released my, quote, tasteful nude calendar where, you know, my actual dick wasn't out. I, I, no, fuck it. Three. News. (laughs) News. Put me on the news. Who watches the news anymore anyway? Old people. (laughs) That's true. Nobody who's our age would watch that, so I guess it'd be fine. Yeah, it'd be fine. Until it got clipped and put on the internet as like a funny moment. But then it'd have to be blurred, so... That's true. It'd be all right. It'd be censorship. Then you get the notoriety without having to show your dick to everybody. Yeah, easy. Oh, I should have moved it to one if I knew it was blurred. I thought it was uncensored. Well, it would only be blurred once it's posted online, because you can't post a YouTube video with a penis in it. But it would be uncensored on the live broadcast. All right. That's interesting. Not so worried about that one, huh? Yeah, not too worried. Uh, where'd you have it? I put that as a six. Mm, almost lined up. I would not. I would not like that to happen. Mainly because I like you definitely could own it, but I don't really have as much of the personality where I would be comfortable just being like, ah, yeah. I just look at what I did. People wouldn't believe that. I, w- I would be like, oh, I did it on purpose. I got those guys, and they'd be like, you were like picking your nose. You didn't do. You didn't. You, clearly, you had no idea that was happening. You're an Is idiot. it too late to change my answer? Is it too late to change my answer? You can change it. We have moved changing on. Six. I'm going. Six, six, six. Final answer. Okay, I, I snuck it down. People can call me a coward all they want. I think there's a better thing to put in three. <laughs> I'm living by my list like we established at the beginning. I'm holding true. You had four. I don't have four open. I got three open. I'm not going to put news up at three. <laughs> <laughs> coward. Okay, this one. You just owned your three like you would own the news. This one you have to come with me a little bit. Okay. It's a, it's a specific premise that definitely can happen. Also myself too. Yeah. You think 
that you are asleep having that dream that is apparently common where you're in class in high school specifically and you realize that you are naked and then you realize that you're not asleep and it's not a dream you're actually just sitting in third period spanish fully nude and somehow you've gotten into this situation don't ask me how because i couldn't come up with a reasonable explanation but you are now sitting in high school third period Spanish, fully naked in front of the teacher, God, and also your classmates, which is probably the worst part. I actually went out to the bus one time and I forgot pants. And I was wearing like those little kid like whitey tighties when I was in like first or second grade. And I went to the bus stop in my underwear. Oh, that's too young. That's too young. This is high school. High school. When it matters. Okay, so high school is whenever you're like, was it Mark first this time? No, I went. It's got to be Mark first eventually. You know, you, you seem confident. Go for it. All right. High school is whenever you're, I think you're like the most emotionally compromised about care, caring about other people's opinions. I feel like those are people you've been growing up with since you were a kid, unless you've moved around. But it's like at that point in time, those people's opinions mean more to you than almost anybody else. So for the state of mind I would be in and for the lack of self-confidence I had in junior high and high school, that would be one of the worst ones for me is at school. I will put that at a nine mm. because of the mindset I would have at the time. At the time, that would be so devastating. I would want to move immediately and never see those people ever again. That would be so devastating if I'm in high school me's head. Looking back, who cares? At the time, that would have mattered a lot. Yeah. Man, that, that is tough because I really wonder how it would have affected me and my life going forward from that moment. Because I was already like a very shy high school kid. If I suddenly, like that was one of my worst fears, I think, is just like, oh my God, what if I just like all oh, suddenly got naked and just like, or everyone even perceiving me as a, as a human being just in general. However, that being said, I'm only looking at this like versus the news, right? So like... Is it worse than the news? Yes? No? Maybe? The only reason I put it there is because of my mindset at the time. If I'm in school, I'm so much more susceptible to people's opinions. Whereas on the news now, it's like, who cares? I'm already married. Life's fine. People, if anything, it's just more exposure of both me and myself. So, hey, views. I'm going to put it at three. Mm. Here's the reason. Because that would be such a fucking incredible story for everyone else. Like, how in the hell did he get naked in class? Like, that would be a legend that would spread through. Like, that chair blows your clothes off. It's like something about the way that chair is like the magnets in the flowing electric field. It blows your clothes off. It would have to be something where that specific chair and it's reproducible where other students are like sitting down. I'm constructing a bit of fabrication here. Just a little. But even if it didn't, they would build the legend, right? Like, that's the chair that makes your clothes explode off your body <laughs> and i'm hoping that when it happens to me and if it never happens to anyone else again that's fine that my shirt goes up and my pants go down and my shoes fly clean off <laughs> and go straight to the front of the room like they don't just disappear they shoot off my body it, it, like confetti I'm putting that at three it would change my life forever. Okay, if we have a magical chair, I would put mine higher, but in a normal human <laughs> scenario, I'm keeping my nine. You're allowed to create whatever lore you want for these guys. Yes, magical school chair, uh, exploding clothes. The scary thing is I still have one up. I've got one, five, seven, eight, ten, and I really don't know who I'm going to put at one. I'm the same way. I'm one, seven, three, ten. What have we done? Wait, no. I, why did I come up with a good solution for that? Uh, I don't know. You had a bad one, but you decided. To ah, pull three shit. Shit. <laughs> it's fine it's fine all right okay all right i'm gonna get right. real creative with one one of these number 10 he's gonna tell us to be like at the strip club it's like god damn it why is that my <laughs> 10 okay well i should probably change that option damn it all right let's do let's do this one next i think this should be easy okay but we'll see where you guys land on it well, we don't have many slots left so it's getting easier you are Fully nude, running through the streets, along the sidewalks, maybe in the road a little, of a big city. You're in New York City, you're in San Francisco, LA, somewhere where it's a big city and there's a lot of people around. And you are naked and running. You can create any other information you would like, but fully public, lots of people are seeing you, you're running around. I've got my answer for this one already, Mark. You go, you go first. If I'm doing this, I'm in a real bad spot. I feel like this has got to be pretty low because you're at a pretty low point. If you're running through the streets naked, you're either running for your life or you don't know where you are. And I think like both of those are representative. You know the who's the guy that was on the street that the Coney 2012 guy that started slapping the ground and shouting to the heavens mm. butt naked. That's what level of emotional disturbance 
confidence I would be to be at that point. I'm going to put that all the way down at a nine. Ooh. Not quite 10 as the worst. I'm going to leave some room, but I'll put like naked on the street at nine for me. Okay. This is number one for me. <laughs> Interesting. Really? Because I feel like if you're streaking through the streets, if you're running, like, one, people aren't going to have as much of a chance of recognizing you because you're just sprinting past them. And two, the only reason I can fathom why you would be doing it, I guess I wasn't thinking about a serial killer being after you, but like, it was like <laughs> a dare. Someone dared you to do it. And it's like, okay, so I've got time to prep. I can manscape if I need to. I can get cleaned up and I can just fucking go people aren't gonna see they're gonna be like that guy's naked by the time they process what they've seen i'm two blocks down and gone and then i get to wherever i'm going no one's any of the wiser who i was for the most part and i got away with it and i got the dare done all right number one streaking <laughs> through the streets old wow that's bold. I hope in the bedroom in the, with a lover isn't on this list because it's going to be pretty low for you. <laughs> Number 10. <laughs> you know how judgmental Molly is of my body. <laughs> <laughs> the shame uh, I feel. Well, that'll be fun when we get to it. I mean, that would obviously be number one, but, you know, I had, uh, listen, <laughs> go big or go home. I took the same <laughs> perspective as you, Wade, but I put it at three, ultimately, because okay. I would feel worse worse about it if it was a dare and I did it because I feel like as an adult if you were like oh so that my bro dared me to do it someone will be like mm hmm and then you did that for a dare <laughs> who says I'm telling anybody about it that, that dare lives with the group that <laughs> dared me but for me I was like if somebody whose opinion like my boss or somebody saw that that might affect my career or my life at the very least i could be like i was going through some stuff you know and and a series of events led to that and hopefully i'm doing better now like it's a thing where if someone would see that i could explain it and they would be like mm. if i ran around the streets naked tanya promised to get her boobs out done <laughs> okay that's how the dares work man you escalate number one baby number one all the way number one <laughs> if your boss is a real bro that might work uh anyway since you brought it up wade or Mark brought it up, whatever. Oh, thank God. You are in your bedroom, and you have a guest over, and you have just finished stripping off every last piece of clothing as you're about to climb into bed with your sexy girlfriend, <laughs> or wife, or date, or whatever. It's about to be hot in here. Great. Number five, because she's not, <laughs> I'm afraid she won't like what she sees and she'll dump me. Oh. <laughs> I've really let myself go, and I don't want my lover to see me in such disarray. <laughs> Definitely not because it's the highest number I have left available. Tell me, what is that below? What is it directly below? Oh, it's right below on the news and right above Jim. <laughs> Oh, man. And it's, it's three below family scene. <laughs> <laughs> Would rather get naked in front of Aunt Jenny than get naked in front uh, of Molly. Yeah. Weird. I'll put it number one, you know, just dead. And I, I, feel, I feel the need to explain no further. <laughs> I cede my time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take some of his time. Listen, do you know what's happened? My manscaped razor didn't arrive on time. The things she saw, the forest she navigated. I'm so embarrassed. Mm. Mm. You could put it at 10 if you're so embarrassed. Oh, no, no, no. That's okay. Five. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad that you, I'm glad you brought that up, Mark. I appreciate that. No, of course, this is what I'm here for. Mark, what numbers do you have left available? I've got seven, eight, ten. I got seven, eight, ten, two. <laughs> I don't know how that worked. Oh, out. hell yeah! All right, let's do it, baby. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's the numbers I have left. Interesting. But also, I have nine left. Am I an idiot? No, I got nine. I got nine filled. I've got three open spots. Streaking through the streets, in front of family, bathhouse, on the news, bedroom with a lover, gym, and high school classroom are the ones I have. Anyway, the next one. Should be easy, okay? You're at the doctor. Great. That happens. Mm. You're at the doctor. You're in an office, in a in an exam room, fully naked at the doctor's office. Uh, of course, it's a pediatrician's office, 
And uh, it's not your doctor. The doctor walks into this exam room to find you fully naked. Wait, you said, okay, so you are naked. There are no children in this scenario. It is just a doctor's office that is not yours. It doesn't have to be a pediatrician. It could be any kind of specialist. You've never been here before, but you're naked in an exam room at this doctor's office. (laughs) That considerably changes. That's so not that bad. What do you mean that's so not that bad? What do you mean that's so not that bad? (laughs) What do you mean? There are worse things. I think he means he screwed himself on the numbers. You know, (laughs) quick little story time here. I had to have three tailbone surgeries, and I think I've told this story before. Mm -hmm. There was a girl probably about my age, looked like she'd probably just started working at this place, who escorted me back to the doctor's office. The doctor comes in, he's the only one in the room with me, and he like has me lay on the table. I'm in the gown, so he lifts, opens the gown, my ass is just there, he's spreading my cheeks, looking at my tailbone, like, this looks like it's healing up pretty nicely. I think we can remove the stitches. Uh, nurses, can I get some help? And of course, that girl and two other ladies walk in, and their job is to hold my cheeks cheeks open open. so the doctor can (laughs) snip and remove my stitches. (laughs) That's a worse scenario to me than this one. Wrong doctor walks in and sees a body. Oh, man. It's just like med school all over again. Well, what what were you going to ask this new cute uh, nurse person who's the new employee out or something? Why is that worse? It's their job. No, because I don't want to do that at someone's work office. Like, you know, I don't want to be that guy. But like, if we had met on a different scenario, sure. So they're doing their job on your ass. It doesn't seem that bad. Doctors see all kinds of gross and weird stuff. Human bodies hold no surprises for them. Some lady's introduction to me being seeing my Frankenstein asshole with my stitches in there is not exactly how I'd want to start off a conversation. Well, it's a really interesting uh, intro to an uh, attempt at asking someone out, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm just Jim Carrey, and I'll put my hands on my cheeks like, Would you like to go out with me? Speaking through my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I, now that you put that, it really does change it. Is this a pediatrician or not? That's really going to change my ranking. I guess I don't want to make it too, like, creepy. Mm -hmm. That was initially what I had gone with just because those are the two main types of doctors. I saw a pediatrician. Now I see a GP Mm -hmm. person. But like... You don't know what type of doctor it is, but it's not your doctor. It's a doctor's office that you've never been to. And they could... It could be a pediatrician's. It could be anything that you want it to be in your version of events. Right. It's a stranger. It's basically... This is equivalent of waking up from an accident and you find yourself in the hospital or something like that. So I wouldn't consider it that bad. It's bad because no matter what, I can't come up with a good reason to be in there naked. Mm. If it's not creepy, it's probably not good for my health. So I would put it lower, but I'm going to put it at eight because I now have one up and one down to go left. So unknown doctor eight for me. I was going to do eight as well. Nice. Cause the two that are left, it's like if one <laughs> really good, I don't want to have it at nine, eight, nine or 10. So, all right. The next scenario is, it's another one that needs a little bit of explanation. You are attending the huge pool party of the summer. Your friend has a dope pool with like a tiki bar and all this cool stuff. It's a great backyard. And everyone showed up. Even Carl came to this party. And you are now standing on the diving board, fully naked, attracting everyone's attention because they first thought you were going to do some sort of cannonball or something funny and now have realized you are naked which no one else is. This is like a normal pool party. Everyone's wearing swimsuits and stuff. You're the one who is naked. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, how many how many people are there watching? All of your everyone, neighbors, basically? Everyone from school and their parents are there. Everyone. This happens all the time, though. It does. People's bathing suits just fall off. It happens all the time. Sure. I guess a seven for the embarrassment. I can't justify that it's the magical pool that explodes your clothes off. Like it's not gonna be it's not gonna fly. It's not gonna the be like a legend. Diving board that explodes your bathing suit off. I'll put it at a seven. I imagine there's gotta be a worse one, but so it, it comes off in the water while you're in the air. It's off and nowhere to be found, and you're standing on the diving board. Oh, Oh, okay, you're still on the diving board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an important detail. You okay, are standing okay. on the diving board and everyone is all, oh, oh, he's naked. So you go to jump in the pool and you're getting ready to jump in and you're like, all right, everyone, cannonball. And then you look down and there's your balls and everyone's looking at you and you don't know why you're naked. You're just there naked. Yep. I mean, okay. those Speedos leave nothing to the imagination anyway. I'm still putting it at seven. Pool party penis. Pool penis party. Pool. Penis pool party. Penis party. Everyone you know care about's there. I don't know what how old you are. I'm gonna gamble and put it at ten. <laughs> okay. Pool penis party is what I typed in as well, so I guess that's what it's called now. That's what it is. <sighs> I'm excited to hear the final rankings. I have to say. Uh, I only got one spot. Great. 
I, th- I think maybe when they're all done, I'll let you make one swap. One swap. See if, oh, uh, see if that fixes everything for you. Okay. Okay. The final... Man, well, I don't know if this is good enough now. I thought this would be quite the conclusion, but uh, well, we're going to use it. We're going to use it. We're going to use it. You have a good friend. You've known each other your whole lives. Uh, they were perhaps in your wedding party or, you know, they, you guys have bonded. You're very good friends. And... Uh, you know, you're getting older now. I don't know if you guys have heard. We're getting older. I've heard that. And they have found the love of their life. They're getting married. And in order to get married, they need their best friends around them at the wedding. They need someone to stand up there with them in front of God and everyone and, uh, you know, help them get over the finish line. You are in the wedding party. Everything's going great. All the lead up is good. You walk down the aisle with your partner and you split up and go to your appropriate spots and stand and clasp your hands and wait for the bride and groom to do the thing. The groom's up there. I don't know how weddings work. The bride is walking down the aisle. It's beautiful. Everyone's crying. It's fantastic. The bride and the bride's father get to the groom and the whole thing where the father, you know, hands his daughter's hand to the groom and says, don't hurt her or I'll kill you in your sleep or whatever they say. And uh, as the father is, you know, turning to go sit back down and everyone is looking at the front in the bridal party uh you inexplicably rip off all of your clothes and get butt ass naked but then start standing back in your exact same spot expecting the wedding to continue and cross your hands in front of you again or behind you whatever one's doing whatever you agreed on and you stand there and wait for the wedding to continue so your friends can get married how bad is that you can do i'm gonna put it at a seven you can do subsequent actions yeah i guess you don't have a choice you can yeah. make subsequent actions you can try and explain why you've done this, uh, but where would you put it, and where is it going to go? Because you only have one spot left, right? That could ruin your friendship with your best friend. That'd be pretty low. I mean, honestly, a seven might actually be kind of fitting for it for me. I feel like there's a couple that I would rather not than that even, but that's pretty bad because it's not necessarily people that even know you, but some of them do, friends and such. I'm comfortable. I'm, honestly, I'm comfortable with a seven for that. I, I'm just judging because I've been at both of your weddings and I'm just imagining mm-hmm. if this exact scenario occurred for both of you, <laughs> would this have mattered? <laughs> but well, luckily I, for you, I had another family member show up that got all the attention. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> but, you know, I'll put it at a 10 for me because I would never want to ruin your beautiful weddings and that would make me feel the worst and I won't swap with anything. I'll put it wedding flasher at number 10. Are you kidding? me the wedding video would have made me millions i could have sold that shit and been rich <laughs> there are other ways there are other ways wade there's other ways markiplier got nude at my wedding not clickbait you know you get one video and if, if it gets like 20 million views you know how much money that's gonna make and it won't be as much as you think yeah yeah gotta sell it to somebody make them think it's worth more than it is <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so that's my last pick. All right. Well, I tried to pump it up a little bit, but I think you guys made me realize that that was maybe not the worst one on the list, but maybe it was. It is for me. Talking to you about it gives me a different perspective than just thinking about it when I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do with this episode. It's interesting. Mm. It's interesting. Interesting. I also think it's interesting that the main concern you guys seem to have about assessing all of these situations wasn't really the nudity itself. It didn't seem like either of you was very self-conscious about people seeing you naked mm. and like knowing what's going on down there or what you look like or whatever. Not that I thought that would be it, but I feel like a lot of people focus on that. I feel like that's a concern. It's a concern for me. I'm pretty self-conscious about it. Hmm. I'll admit that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, anyway. I'm relatively okay with it, shockingly, or, or unshockingly, depending on your knowledge of my nude calendar I made. Oh, that's right. Mm. It's all out there. I have unwittingly seen most of it. I didn't buy a copy. I thought about it, but I didn't. Yeah. But I've seen most of it. I just <laughs> you Google Markiplier Tasteful Nudes. You're going to see it, Wade. That sounds weird, like I was looking it up, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, man. Okay, come on. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever. Search Markiplier <laughs> Nude Incognito. <laughs> oh, now nobody knows. Mm. I guess my final list goes streaking through the streets as one, in front of family as two, bathhouse, on the news, bedroom with my lover at five... <laughs> The gym, only one naked, nude at wedding, wrong doctor, high school classroom, pool penis party, oopsie whoopsie. 
<laughs> That's how I wrote that one out. Right, right. If I can only flip one, I'm flipping streaking through the streets with bedroom with lover. Bedroom with lover is one. No, keep it. Keep no, keep it. <laughs> keep it at number one, you streak you loving coward. bastard. You coward. Well, if I had to flip. No, no. Don't let him flip, Bob. No? Don't let him flip. Let him live with that. Let him live with that. Let the people I made roast him. Promises. No, we we all heard him say it. We all heard where he put Fine, then I would flip five with four. I put the news below with the bedroom of the lover and streaking at one. Fine. How's that? <laughs> Bold choices. Uh, it's I still love funny, it. so I guess it's good. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, my list goes as number one is lover, number two is family, number three is magical school chair that explodes your clothes, number four is bathhouse, <laughs> number five is gym, number six is news, then pool penis party, unknown doctor at eight, naked on the street at nine, and wedding flasher at ten. Worst place to suddenly find myself naked. That's a pretty good ten. If I had to do this over again, knowing them all ahead of time. Wouldn't change a thing. Not change a thing. I, I mean, I definitely would. <laughs> <laughs> Lover at one, bathhouse at two. Streaking would still be three. Streaking would still be up there. I would not like that. That to me is like, that's easy. Streaking at three, family at four. Mm. Wrong doctor. Who cares? There's one person and they see bodies all the time. Jim mm. at six. News at seven, pool party at eight, friends wedding at nine, and high school classroom at ten. Because I feel like my mindset at the high school level that would be so much more devastating at that point. But streaking in the streets, perfectly fine. <laughs> you see boobies when you're walking around the streets; it's a good day. So if I'm gonna return the favor, so be it. You're welcome, or I'm sorry if you saw it. I guess. <laughs> sorry. Depending on my confidence that day. <laughs> you're just carrying a sign around with you. On the front, it says "You're welcome." On the back, it says "Or I'm sorry." Either one. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on my self-confidence on the day. <laughs> lover five. Definitely lover at five, streaking at one. Right, right. Solid. Of course. All right. I wouldn't change a goddamn thing. Yeah, I feel like Mark's list came out actually pretty reasonable, considering. Thank you. I made you just play roulette with it. Thank you. Good random picking, man. Where did you have the pool party at, Mark? Uh, pool party was seven. Okay, that's pretty okay, yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. All things told. Not bad. Well, there you go. Nudity. I thought we were talking about seeing other people naked. I'm a little disappointed. I wanted to talk about seeing other people nude. Well, I, that took a lot longer than I thought it would, if I'm honest. I was going to do the whole thing also, but in terms of seeing, pe being a viewer of nakedness. Reddit, tell us we need another episode of this. We need more nudity. Are there any of those that stand out as the thing that would concern you if you saw a naked person in that context if i saw someone no yeah, so take all those scenarios we were just going through if you're one of the spectators your cousin is naked in front of you at a at your oh, a family get together you're in the gym when someone is naked any of that stuff does any of that even bother you i'd least like to see a family member naked probably because then it's like awkward and i don't know what to say a stranger or someone else like who cares it was literally just, yeah if it's strangers whatever it, it, like i'm kind or of classmate or whatever literally a few weeks ago amy and i were driving and on the highway on the side of the road some lady was just sitting there naked and we went oh i hope she's okay and then we drove on yeah bold choice it looked like she was doing her laundry <laughs> it really did <laughs> yeah i guess that's why i've got rid of that too is i we're all pretty casual not serious not prudish people i feel like i wouldn't care either breathe right? a nipple seriously who cares the human body is a human body as far as i'm concerned if you want to yeah. keep it private that's great if you don't well try not to <laughs> try not to get in it uh, uh, do any harm i guess yeah yeah but family would have to be the lowest one because it like depends on who like imagine like you know great aunt margaret comes to give you a smooch on the cheek she's just butt naked it's oh, like no this is weird please <laughs> That's just how great Aunt Margaret is. I know. I gotta love her. I think my lowest one might be if I was the doctor in the random doctor's office one, just because I would be like, how did you get back here? Why are you already naked? Like, it would be concerning. I would be like, wrong room. Uh, get dressed. I'll, I'll have my associate escort you to the proper room. Uh, who are you supposed to be seeing? I'd get out of there as fast as I could. It would be concerning to me, but not for, like, the nudity necessarily. Just, like, the, the situation. I would be like, where's our receptionist? Like, what's going on? This is not supposed to happen. But, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly care. At the gym, I guess it'd be a little weird if you're, like, working out and the dude next to you comes over and just, like, drops his pants. Yeah, that's, that's max yeah. of harassment, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, yeah. That's not great. I guess it would depend on the context, but like uh, that would be, yeah, my brain would go there first too, probably. Listen up, everyone. Nudity ain't so bad, even though society and, and everything tells us it is here. It's fine. 
And honestly, being the person who's naked in all these scenarios, none of those would like ruin your life. I feel like the older I get, the less I care about it too. Like I was, I would be afraid of someone seeing me when I was in high school, but now it's like, eh, if it happens, it happens, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the end then. I feel like this is an interesting thing. I would talk about this for a long time and there's lots of news stories about nudity, but not for today. I would love to talk about nudity for a long time with you. <laughs> Mm. all right mm. okay what i have to do now is pick a winner ah. obviously and while wade did fight back with some excellent stories and some bold choices on his list ah, i find it hard to overlook the amount of points that mark earned for his korean bathhouse story yeah. it was funny it was topical i would also agree i getting punched in the balls that many times he deserves <laughs> he deserves it I, the, the, the massaging with the ball punching is outrageous and i love it thank you very much thank yeah. you thank so, you thank yeah you. i have to declare mark the winner yeah. Sorry. i knew i'd lost the moment his balls got punched mm -hmm. such a funny visual i just can't not think about mark's balls all right my dry spells over and everyone has their mind on my balls well change that mark give a winner speech what do you got to say well thank you everybody so much for being here and being a part of the podcast we've got a big bright beautiful future ahead of us and i can't wait for uh the things that grace us in our the future of podcasting and me and also us and our friendship that we share and the beautiful yes very gracious and the beautiful moments that we okay. have together okay. oh. will be will, with me all along and and we were all naked from the waist down uh, yeah ex excellent excellent speech mark you wandered away from the point a little bit there i think but that's uh, it's good speech good speech you have a loser speech wade yes what mark said but less happy about it fair fair and just anyway that's it for the episode thank you so much for listening make sure that you follow or subscribe or hit the bell or whatever hit that thing so that you know that every monday when the podcast comes out it's there for you waiting watching lurking in the shadows to entertain you probably Yay. or make you really angry with a tier list or something Ooh. that's gonna be it you can find mark at markiplier on everywhere wade at lord minion 777 or minion 77 on twitch three sevens minion 777 and me my skirm i'm back on twitch so twitch.tv slash my skirm check it out i stream video games even isn't it good to be back on twitch now that everyone's really happy with them yeah no drama whatsoever everything's great <laughs> on twitch i love it welcome back uh, thank you for listening. And as we say in the business, check out our merch. Podcast out. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't plug that, did I? You know what? Fuck it. Don't check out our merch. There's nothing good there. <laughs> it's all stupid. I can't even muster fake outrage. That's the end. I'm tired or something. All right. Podcast out. This episode of Distractable is presented by Intel. How wonderful is that? Learn more about how Intel powers the things that make our life wonderful at intel.com slash how wonderful.